dear professors, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Georgi Georgiev and I'm a PhD student at the Department of Economics of Anglo Kanjuk University of Brussels. It is a great honor and pleasure for me to have the opportunity to speak up in front of you today. Now, let me introduce my research, my project. It is related about application of Markov chain to model and forecast consumer price index and deflation. And this is only for the Republic of Bulgaria, exactly the case of Bulgaria. So let's go on and see the uh, whole project. First of all, I would like to begin with the following question, uh, which is probably one of the most important in the every sphere of life. Could we predict the future? However, now I would like to modify it and to say, could we predict the future? Could we predict when the economy will be hit by deflation? So, uh, when we speak about economic forecasting tendencies, this becomes really important because such an opportunity can provide us the possibility to have the knowledge what can happen to the price of goods and our income in the future. The particular case is about uh, could we predict when we will have a process of deflation, despite the fact that it is a rare event. So, uh, why I would like to point that uh, now the focus of the paper is not inflation but deflation. Why it is so important? Because in modern economic thoughts, it is considered that most years exactly consider that deflation is really a uh, much more harmful event than uh, inflation. So uh, I suggest to see I suggest to see the structure of the report. It has three main chapters, let's say, three main basic points. First of all, basic concepts of deflation. Secondly, uh, stochastic, again, basic concepts of stochastic process of value chains. And finally, uh, we have, I have done a commercial experiment. It is important to be said that the period of analysis is from February 1995 to March 2020, and it is for Bulgaria, as I said before. For the analysis, it is used the computer environment MATLA. Uh, some of the limitations of the project is that in the report it is not made uh, but, uh, clear and distinguish between good and bad deflation. However, this is not an object to the report, but uh, I think that despite the fact what kind of deflation we have, either it is good or bad, it can uh, also turn into a bad deflation because it can also turn, it can also lead to a high level of unemployment and to another negative economic consequences, which we will see in the next points. First of all, we speak about the basic concepts of deflation. So, what is inflation? Everybody, know, everybody knows that if prices go up, we have inflation. If prices go down, we have deflation. So, we, sh we should distinguish between inflation, disinflation and also deflation. If now, if at the current month, the, the consumer price index is about 1%, the, after that, one month after the next month becomes 2%, after that 3%, we have, uh, we have inflation. This inflation we have, for example, in this month the, the consumer price index is 3%, and immediately after that it becomes 2 or 1 and so on and so on. But deflation is exactly inflation with the sign reverse. So deflation is a negative inflation. Uh, as I said, the deflation with the sign reserved. It is something like a negative growth. So, let's see uh, a definition of deflation. According to the Mathemon Dictionary, 
It is a general reduction of uh, prices and the level of conductivity. Similar are the diminutions in the Oxford and Cambridge dictionaries. Exactly in Cambridge dictionary, deflation is characterized as in following situation in which prices fall and this leads to a reduction in wages and government spending, which is which is something like a, a leading factor for all levels of growth. So, at the next slide, I show again how, what can lead to deflation, which are the two main things that can lead exactly supply and demand side shocks. So, nevertheless, we speak about uh, shifting of AD or AS curve. We, we can have a deflation. One of the possibilities is uh, contracting and shifting the aggregate demand curve to the left, but not with coincidental move to the aggregate to the aggregate supply curve. The another option is to have a short run ES, the so-called aggregate supply curve expanding and shifting to the route, but without being covered by an expansion of the aggregate demand curve. So these are the two options. Uh, yes. One can lead to a good, another can lead to a bad deflation. But economists like Paul Kurman or Ben Bernanke think that all kinds of inflation can be harmful for the economy because they can lead to a spiral effect of a reduction of prices and so to go to a uh, high level of employment. Other scientists distinguish items between three types of deflation good, bad and ugly. Exactly the last one, ugly deflation, is one example, uh, is exactly the, great, the period of the Great Depression, or the so-known Great Contraction. Let's go on. On this slide I have uh, made an example about the paradox of deflation. Why it is good sometimes and why it is bad. Let's say that our favorite computer game costs uh, $100 today. But we have information and we know that uh, tomorrow its uh, cost will be $90. So, the question which we face is to buy or not to buy this game. Probably we should behave rationally and it is rational to postpone consumption for tomorrow or even to buy this game if, uh, if there is an opportunity uh, its cost to become even less than $19. So, the logic shop shows that it is better to postpone our consumption, but this will lead to less spending today. When we spend less today, this will lead to some more profits for companies and they will try to reduce their costs. They have two options to reduce their costs, two main options, to cut wages or to reduce people from staff. Both of them, cutting wages and reducing people from staff is bad for consumers. Why is it bad for consumers? Because consumers will spend again less money. This will lead to new price cutting and we see the spiral effect. And this can lead really to a higher rate, rate, rate of rate of unemployment. Also, deflation leads to reduction to redistribution from debtors to creditors, which is uh, very harmful for the economy because uh, it can very easily it can very easily lead to problems for the banking sector and for the particular companies. So uh, redistribution from debtors to creditors is a worse uh, case than redistribution from creditors to debtors. So now let's see the basic concepts of stochastic processes and market chains. Let's first of all define what is a stochastic process. A stochastic process can be described as a kind of mathematical model that evolves over time in a probabilistic manner. In other words, it is any process describing the evolution in time of random phenomena. Such events are almost everyone around us, from weather forecasting to medical decision making to exactly like it's now economic analysis. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are Markov chains? Markov chains are part, they are important ones of stochastic processes, mainly because they satisfy the so-called 
Neumann is property, which means that the distribution of the next state depends only on the current state. In other words, a Markov chain is a collection of random variables having the property that, given the present, the future is conditionally independent of the past. A typical example of a Markov chain is a single random walk. Here you can see a formal definition of Markov chain. Also, uh, Markov chains, they mean, uh, using Markov chains means that if the current state of the process is known, no, no, no additional information about its previous state is needed to make the best possible prediction for the future states of the process. Uh, so the simplification allows a significant reduction in the number of parameters when studying such a process. Uh, also, we could add that a mark of chain is called a sequence of random events with a finite or countable number of results characterized by the property in a fixed current state. The next one does not depend on the previous states. So, not so much mathematics. Here I show what are the transition matrix. Now, let's go to our final point, but most important, the so-called numerical examples. I have developed three types of models. The first one has two states, the second one has three states, and the third one has six states. Let's see model number one. We have the probabilities of consumer price index of moving up or down, and exactly now we have two states. State 1, in which the value of the consumer price index is lower than the one of the previous month, and state 2, in which the value of consumer price index is higher than the one of the previous month. We calculate the transaction, the transition matrix, and in conclusion, we can say that the probability of decreasing the value of consumer price index is higher than that of an increase. Basing on the given model, there cannot be made a conclusion about the magnitude of this uh, increase or decrease, in the case we speak about the decrease. But we can say that you have a probability of 55% uh, to have a decrease of the consumer price index in the next month. Model number two, we have three, three states. Uh, the value to fall more than 0 0.3, to be in a particular interval between minus 0 0.3 to plus 0 0.3, and to be more than 0 0.3. Again, I calculated the transition matrix, and in conclusion, I can say that the highest probability of the second model is that the value of the consumer price index will decrease with more than 0 0.3. The probability of this to happen is 39% as, as you can see. Uh, to be in the interval between minus, minus uh, 0.3 to 0.3 is 26% and to be more than 0.3 is about 35%. And now let's see uh, also, here I have calculated the so-called expected value. We see that it is a negative uh, value and uh, it is approximately minus 0.026. In, it can be said that the trend in the near future is that the value of the index will not make major changes. At the beginning of the next month, a slight decrease in the index by about zero, minus 0 0.026 units can be expected. The third model has six states. Again, I have calculated the transition matrix and from here we can see that the last probability of the third model is the value of the consumer price index to decrease with more than 0.3. The probability to have on this is about 35%. The expected value is negative and it is approximately minus 0.018. It could be concluded that the trend in the near future is that the value of the index will not make major changes. And we will have a particular decrease. In the conclusion of the whole research, of the whole report, uh, I would like to say that this analysis shows the necessity of using mathematical and statistical methods for forecasting the behavior of diff different economic variables. This will help us to better predict the effects of particular economic policies and also to improve the decision-making process. Future aspects of study can be focused on the use of neural networks, differential equations, and especially quantum methods for time series forecasting. Thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to present in front of you. I hope very soon to have the opportunity to see you. Thank you one more time. It was a pleasure.